Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today with a tutorial on how to thicken up a font for either laser engraving or laser cutting. So let's get started. When I'm picking my fonts for customers, I have a default Adobe Illustrator document that I store all of my fonts in so I can easily give my clients an easy preview and easy options for picking what font they want to use for their projects. So what mine looks like is this. I'm going to go into here, into my designs, open up my font samples, and this is what I have for my font. So I picked a bunch of the fonts that I personally like, and I just typed them out, left them on an artboard, and saved them. But what I can do here is when my clients want to see how something would look in a certain font, I can type it in here and just do an easy replace. So you go up into the edit menu, go into find and replace, and what I do is I have a find for Logan Robert because that's the verbiage that I have in the document. And then I would replace it with what they wanted it to be. So let's just replace it with Heather Lynn. We're going to match case because I do have capitals in here. I'm going to find and I'm going to replace all. Click OK and then click done. What I have here now is something that I can easily screenshot and send to my client so that they can pick from all of these fonts and see if any of them fit their needs. Once I have all of that done and my client has made their decision on what font they're going to be using, I hop into a new document. I don't save the changes on this document and that way I always have my default that says Logan Robert for me to do an easy replace. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a font that's called Chin Up Buttercup, which is a font that I use a lot on my Christmas ornaments, and it's definitely a font that needs to be thickened almost always unless you're engraving. So let's go with we're going to be cutting out a name, and it needs to be thickened just to make sure that it's sturdy enough to be attached to a wall. So let's open a new document. We're going to do Command or Control N as in Nancy for new either start a new document 20 by 12, whatever size that you want it to be. I'm gonna do a 20 by 12 document. I'm gonna zoom out a bit here. So I'm going to be using the type tool, which is T on your keyboard. I'm going to go over here. I'm gonna change the uh, font to a larger font. Let's just do a 48. I'm going to pick chin up buttercup here. I'm going to click on my artboard and I'm just going to type Heatherlin. I'm gonna click anywhere else on my artboard to get out of that. Use the V selection tool to select it, and I'm going to hold down shift while I'm scaling this larger just so we can see it. So let's just say that we have a client that is asking for an 18 inch wide name cutout. We could select this name with our selection tool, go up here in your properties panel over here and change the width. Make sure that you're maintaining your width and height proportion so that it doesn't get warped when you change this. You're gonna change it to the width of let's say 18. Now it's 18 inches wide and it is 7.8 inches high. And now we can add our stroke. So what you're going to do with a font is make sure it's selected. Go over here into your appearance menu and go into the stroke. You're going to change the stroke to as thick as you'll need it. So you can either use these arrows here next to the drop down menu. You can actually type in to this box if you'd like to, or you can pick from this drop down menu. I'm just going to use this arrow, I added a four point stroke, and I'm just gonna use this arrow to thicken up this font just a little bit more because I wanna show you what happens with this font when I add a thick stroke. I'm gonna bump this up until you start seeing little points. As you see down here, there's one. Yep, see how the H over here? So this is what we're going to settle with. This is thick, we'll be able to make sure that it's not burnt. We're going to outline this and then I'm going to show you how to fix these jagged points that appeared because we added a stroke to this and the anchor points on the original font are most likely not lined up correctly or they're just not friendly enough for us to be able to add this thick of a stroke without manually editing it. You can go into the stroke properties over here, click on the word stroke and change your corner joins to the round join here and sometimes that will fix it. But for this tutorial, I want to be able to show you how to manually edit these fonts and how to manually edit these pairs easily with the pencil tool and sometimes the eraser tool and sometimes the delete anchor point tool. So I'm gonna do it the hard way for this one just to make sure that we cover all the bases. If you'd like to know more on how to edit those stroke properties, I do have a tutorial on my channel that's called How to Create a Dashed Line in Adobe Illustrator, and that'll walk you through the entire panel within the stroke properties. Now, if we want to manually edit this, which is what we're going to be doing for this tutorial, I'll walk you through the steps. And the first thing that we're going to do is create outlines. So you're either going to right click and pick create outlines, or you're going to hit Command Shift 
O or Control Shift O on Windows. And what you'll see here is that it's going to set an outline to just the original font path, which is inside what we added for the stroke. After you create outlines on a font, if you have added a stroke to that font, you'll want to expand the stroke. So you're gonna go up into your object menu and you're gonna to go to expand. Make sure that your menu looks like mine here and then you're going to click OK. And what you'll see is that blue line that you're seeing right now in the middle of the font is going to hop to the edges. You're going to also see that there's a double path that gets created and we're going to merge that. So let's just click OK here. And what you see now are a few paths that we're going to address by merging them together. Always unite your cursive fonts together after you create your outlines to make sure that you don't have any negative space that will happen during an engrave or make sure that you don't have any extra paths that will cut during a laser cutting job. So we're going to go over here into the Pathfinder menu while we still have everything selected and we're going to click Unite. Now we have everything united together and now we can zoom in and focus on how to fix these little pieces that we definitely don't want there if we're going to be cutting it out on our laser because as we know, clicking on outline view will show you what the laser will follow and the laser is definitely going to pick up these jagged points. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see there's a jagged point here, there's one here. So you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on this stuff when you're thickening fonts just to make sure nothing gets wonky and it's very easily fixed and I always work in outline mode when I'm fixing things just to make sure I can see all the anchor points that I'm working with. So let's get started on editing. I'm going to start on this left hand side. I'm going to zoom in. I am holding down option on my keyboard and scrolling in with my mouse. You can also command plus sign to zoom in or you can go down here in the left hand corner and you can change your uh, percentage down there. So I am zoomed in and I am going to be using the pencil tool and the eraser tool for most of the manual editing. So right now I have this shape selected. I'm going to be using the pencil tool to get rid of this, or you can also use the delete anchor point tool, but they don't work the same. So what I'll show you here is using the delete anchor point tool is the minus key on your keyboard, or you can go over here into your menu and pick the one that looks like a little pen tip with a minus sign next to it. And you're just gonna hover over this anchor point that you're deleting and it goes right back to the way it should be. I'm gonna zoom in down here, click delete on this anchor point here, and that looks fine. Now, what I'm seeing over here is something that looks jagged to me. See how these bumps? can't really tell unless you're really staring at it, but your laser will pick that up. So normally what I would do is I would take the pencil tool, which is N on your keyboard, or you can hit the pencil tool, which is on the left-hand menu. It looks like this little guy. If you don't see it, you would right click on the paintbrush tool and it'll be hidden in that menu. And you can actually hover over this line and just redraw a straighter path if you don't want those little bumps there. You can also delete those anchor points with the delete anchor point tool. But basically what this is, is you're just re-editing this path so that it's a little bit cleaner and you don't pick up all of those harsh lines. I'm going to zoom out. And now that is fixed. Normally I would do a lot more editing for this, but I'm not gonna make you watch all of that. What I'm going to do is show you how to use this bottom one with the eraser tool or with the pencil tool. So right now zooming in, this is out of place. This is definitely out of place. This is totally out of place. So what you can do with your pencil tool is you can click here and drag all the way around to get rid of that. If you don't want to use your pencil tool, I'm going to Command Z undo. If you don't want to use your pencil tool, you could use the eraser tool to shape this. I'm selecting this. Shift E is your eraser tool or it looks like this over here on your menu. If you don't see it, you may see the scissors tool. Just click on the scissors tool and it'll be in that menu. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to use Shift E, the eraser tool. It's small right now. The brackets on your keyboard above the return key change the size of your eraser. So you can hit the right bracket, the close bracket to increase or the begin bracket to decrease. Or you can also double click on the eraser tool on the side and you can change some of the stuff in there as well. So I'm going to cancel out of there. The eraser tool, most people think it's just going to erase everything after. It tries to create a new path for you. So it always tries to close the path out. So for the eraser tool, I could click here and I can drag across like I would for the pencil tool. And what it's going to do is it's going to separate these into two shapes. 
So now as you see this extra piece down here, we won't need that. So you can use your V selection tool, click anywhere on your artboard to deselect everything. And then you can just click on this little piece here. We're going to Command Shift G, Control Shift G, or right click ungroup all the way down until you can just select this piece and hit delete on your keyboard. That's how the eraser tool works. Again, this is still a little bit jagged for my liking. So I would go back in with the pencil tool and on your keyboard and I would just redraw that little shape there. And this line here, I don't like that. You can just keep going over it and over it until you have the shape that you like. Up here, up top, I'm going to use the delete anchor point tool. I'm going to click on this little jagged edge and bring that right back in. And I don't like that that little point is there, so I am just going to round that out a tiny bit. Now, when you're working with compound shapes like these are, compound shapes means that there are shapes within the shapes. Any letter that has a loop in it, that inside loop is a compound shape. So when you're editing text with the pencil tool, you have to be mindful of which path that you're on because it will jump for you. What I mean by that is if you are editing this outside loop, it'll let you keep going all the way around the edges. But if you then wanted to edit this inside loop, you have to off click somewhere and then reselect. So let me show you how that works. So you're going to make sure that you have your shape selected. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. And I'm going to fix just right here on the outside. So this is part of the outside path of the compound shape. So N for my pencil tool, I'm just gonna loop this around so it's not such a harsh curve there. And then if I wanted to edit this inside shape, I'm not able to. Do you see how it's not selected? So I can keep going on the outside of this shape and edit as much of this as I want to. Just keep moving along. But if I wanted to stop and edit the inside of this shape, I would have to click off and then reselect it. So I'm going to go to my selection tool V. I'm going to select outside so I don't have this selected. I'm going to reselect this and then I'm going to go to the pencil tool N. And now I can edit this inside shape edit that and if you can see it deselected the rest of the shapes so now V selection tool click anywhere else reselect and then hop back into the pencil tool and you can keep moving on with editing other paths let's scroll through here and make sure that there are no other jagged lines or edges that we need to take care of and there's one more thing here right between the Y and the N. I'm going to change this connector a bit just so that it's a little bit thicker because that's probably going to snap off. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to use the V selection tool to select this path. I'm going to hop into my pencil tool and I am going to change this so that it has a little bit of a thicker connection. And I don't like that last change. So we're gonna go maybe straight across with this one. And down. That should probably work. Yeah, it's still gonna be a little bit fragile, but that'll work better than it was before. So now that we have that complete, I'm going to hop back into preview mode. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to Command G and group it together, or you can right click and pick group. I'm going to shift this from fill to stroke by hitting shift X on my keyboard, or you can hover over this little arrow here and click on that. And now that is a black stroke, I'm gonna change it to a red stroke so that it's ready for laser cutting. And we're ready to export as an SVG or copy and paste it from Adobe Illustrator into Lightburn. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.